Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story of power. A story of perseverance. A story of pain. A story that is yet to be finished. My name is Jordan Banks. I'm 22 years old. And if you can't tell, I love baseball. <sighs> well, October 29th, 2020. Just came off a great summer down in Virginia Beach, but now it's time to ask the coach for a tryout this year. I'm no worse off than I already am, so I might as well just go and talk to him, right? I'm actually really hopeful. So honestly, like, I just want to go find out. This video covers from when I was young to now, and then hopefully the future. But I do a terrible job explaining it. So I'll let the others who witness it tell the story for me. I got my first hit ever on this field. This is a big nostalgia trip for me. <laughs> I just grew up loving the game. It was always around me, sports, anything. I always loved playing t-ball out here because once you got in between these fences, all the problems of the world were just on the outside. And all I just had to do was focus on baseball. Good memories out here. Real good. My name is William Banks. I'm Jordan Banks' father. I live in Bristol, Connecticut. My dad was a big influence in my baseball career and my life. Without him, I probably wouldn't be playing baseball today. Growing up with Jordan was... Uh, Pleasure. I always said if I have boys, they're gonna play baseball. So you can play soccer, basketball, football, whatever. Just make them athletic. I wanted to do it. I just you're gonna play baseball. You're gonna try to play baseball and see what happens. You know what I mean? Because I played baseball. Well, I was okay, but I wasn't you know anything to write home about. But uh, when he was younger with the kids, Jordan was always catching. I used to work with him all the time, so he was catching everything. He went to war for me, no matter what. One prime example came when I was just starting out in little league. Edgewood Little League, home of the New England and Mid-Atlantic Regionals. This is the field that you see on TV all the time. Six strikeouts, Pennsylvania. Not a long road trip for them. I played here, for real. So seeing that field when I was younger, I couldn't help but be anxious to get on that field and play as well. So I went and tried out. You know, signed up for Edgewood. You know, they had tryouts and things like that. So I went to a uh, tryout. Uh, I think he was like like nine. Jordan was doing great. Catching, he did everything. He, he made no mistake. And I was watching other kids out there that was dropping the balls and everything like that. So they said, well, we'll let you know. The coach will call you and see how you made the team. So Saturday, got no call. Didn't get a call Sunday. So I got a call for, from AAA. Jordan found out some of the kids that had made it before him, and they were terrible, dropping balls and everything like that. And It really stunk during the tryout because I knew I was better than everybody else. In baseball, it gets real political, even in Little League. So when I didn't make it, it kind of hurt me. So then I uh, wrote a note to the uh, commissioner of the Edgewood. You know, I told him, you know, I didn't like the way it went down. I said, Jordan should have made the team. He was catching everything. What are you guys doing down there? You're running a horse and pony show. And I shouldn't have said it, but I did because I was mad. Jordan started crying. So I'm like, you know what? I look back, Jordan was crying. I was like, man, bump this. Boom, I pressed send. And it was like the, uh, the send that went around the world. We were hated in that league. Parents, friends, neighbors, all heard the news of the email and it was just like there was a target on our backs. They are like, oh, who is this new kid trying to tell us how to run a league and how we should operate? So regardless of me not getting selected for majors, I still played in AAA in 2009 and then I had to go to my tryout for the next year. So here we go. He goes for the, the 11 year old tryout for majors again. We went to Parisi's and he was doing a camp. One of the coaches for the 11 year old team was up there with his son, but he was doing something else. My friend, I seen one of the coaches, he was looking at me throwing the ball to Jordan. He was like, oh, okay, he was just sitting there watching. Mind you, he's one of the guys that know what people were saying about me and Jordan, and they weren't gonna pick Jordan no matter what. Jordan was lights out. 
two weekends in a row. Boom, bang, bang. He looked really good. He didn't make any errors, nothing. Saturday comes, Saturday afternoon. They said, well, we're gonna see if the coaches call you. So then it was time to pick teams. Saturday came. I didn't get any call. Sunday came. All of a sudden, the phone rang. It was the coach that was down there up at Parisi's watching Jordan. He says, Mr. Banks, how you doing? I said, good, how you doing? He says, uh, I got your son. He's on this, he's on my team. I was like, okay, bet. He said, well, he says, I got him, I got him. And it come to find out is, you know, they did a draft and he picked Jordan last. So what he did was got other kids that were good. He knew Jordan was good. So instead of picking Jordan, and leaving the, one of the other kids for the other coaches, he waited till last to take Jordan. But just like that, I was up, but I wasn't done. I had to be better. Man, Jordan ended up starting for the best team. This Rangers team was filthy. They said Ranger danger every time because we were dangerous. <laughs> this team, he was the, I call it murderer's row. This 2010 team was probably the best team, I think, ever in Little League in Bristol. They scored like 25 runs a game. We ended up winning a league title and the City Series. The City Series is three Little Leagues. This one, McCabe Waters, Forestville. The winners of the league played together in like a little round robin, and then the winner of that is like the, the city champ. I won that twice in two years. And Little League was a success. I was ready for high school, but life. So now this is one, this one's gonna be tough, but you don't you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Talk about the the mental and physical toll it took on the family when mom passed away. Oh man. She just went out and uh, never came back. I never got a chance to say say bye. Um, it still eats at me today. She went out and they found her about 30 minutes away from my house in the woods. I don't know what happened. To be honest, uh, I, I don't want to know. Never seen me graduate middle school and it sucks. Still today. Anybody else like her for me. You know, I put on I put on like 30 pounds. We was eating out every night. Uh, I gained a lot of weight. Uh, probably close to 100 pounds. I was just numb. Numb. Uh, it was catastrophic. I had two boys I had to raise, and the Lord said, you better do it. Or I'm gonna take you out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went to my eighth grade year with a hole in my heart, but the rebuilding process has started. So our family would go to the one place that we could shut out all the problems of the world and just do what we love. In doing so, we met a special person who's been on the journey with us ever since. Where the magic happens. Get my work in twice a week. Then I go home. Let's talk to my hitting instructor, Nelson. See what he's got to say. You know, how long has it been? Like, what has it been? Like 12 years? It's been like 12 years. Time flies. Cause I remember first coming in here being like, what am I getting into? Like, <laughs> my name is Nelson Zamboy. I'm from Dominican Republic, from Pedernales. I played baseball with the Houston Astros for seven years. I played in Dominican Republic since I was like maybe seven years old. You know, baseball is our way out in Dominican. For kids that we don't have another way out, this is our way out. Do or die. That's, that's what, how it is. I moved up to the United States when I was 17, after I got signed by the Houston Astros in 1993. I started teaching lessons in 2001 when I moved to Connecticut. How I got introduced to Nelson was because of a friend of mine. You know, I met him at, at the gym and uh, he said, Joe, your son got some potential. This guy named Nelson Sandboy. I said, is that the guy that used to be up at Parisi's? You know what, Jordan didn't like him at all. So I got his number, I called him, I met him. 
um, we went from there, and he's been having Jordan ever since he was like nine, ten years old. He's a great hitting coach, one of the best in the world, I think. You know, in the beginning, I didn't even, I didn't even like you were like always yelling at kids because you were from the Dominican Republic. I was like, oh no, nah, this guy is too <laughs> much. Do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. Jordan didn't like that stuff. When I first saw Jordan, I saw this tall, lanky kid with a great ability. He was very mature for his age. He was probably around. So Nelson always wanted to bring out the best, but me, I wanted the easy way out. So our heads clashed when it came to working out. Our workout were uh, very hard, straight, even for adults, because we want to be the best in Connecticut. Oh man, his workouts are off the hook, man. I mean, he have you jumping on the hole in the fence, doing D raises real, real fast. You gotta think about the summer workouts too. Running, the, we we had this one, it was the, the fence pushes. We would run and like push on the fence like this. He have you doing all that stuff, man. Then he have you like, like stop, you take a five, five second break, and then you gotta do run sprints. And I'm telling you guys, like those were some of the hardest things. Cause you do it for like 30 seconds. And on top of that, you do like bear crawls, sprints, running up the hills. And you'd be like, beat. I mean, I see him had guys like falling on the ground, man. He says, you gotta be in shape. You gotta be in shape. You ain't in shape. You ain't gonna get the best out of you. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. There you go, same pitch. I mean, Nelson helped me get through a bunch, but nothing prepared me for what high school had to throw my way. Now let's go to high school. Uh, do I have to talk about that? Out of all the fields, this one is probably one of my most favorite to come to. High school was fun. Baseball-wise, all I wanted to do was start varsity. In my freshman year on the team, I was terrible. Borderline awful, like shouldn't have played awful. I remember freshman year, you could get a chance to get called up to JV. And I was one of the only kids that didn't get called up to JV. And then as a sophomore, I was one of the only people to not get called up to at least watch a varsity game, let alone play a game on varsity. Oh, I was living. When you work with a kid like Jordan, you expect to be a result. I was, you know, frustrated because I know how much work we had done, how much time we have put, seeing like we didn't get a result. So it was the time to me and his father to talk about it and start putting more effort instead of throwing the towel. And junior year was more of the same. And he didn't get called up to varsity again. But things changed. The game that changed my life at this school was a game I didn't even play on this field. I played in the JV game and went two for three with two doubles. So then I got a chance to dress for the varsity game and potentially get an at-bat. And in a blowout game that we were winning, the coach looked for someone to give a pinch hit at-bat to. It was me and one other kid. The other kid didn't get a single hit in that entire JV game that we both played. I had two. I think you can guess who he picked. And I, I didn't know what to do. What else could I do to start varsity? Or at least get in that bat again. I went home and made a vow to myself that I would never let that happen to me again. And I was gonna be one of the best players that he had next year. The night was rough. I was angry, confused, but I was determined to prove my coach wrong. So I kept working and, and biding my time uh, until... Until Berlin. The varsity team was getting scraped. So the coach for the varsity said, send up the, the whole JV team. He sat the whole varsity team down to put Jordan up there. Jordan gets up, boom, he hits a triple down the line. And then he gets up again, he hits a line drive base hit to left field. All the other guys was like, did you play JV? So then, all of a sudden, he bought them up. They, they went on to win their next eight games. And then in the tournament game, he was supposed to start Jordan, and he didn't. And the guy you put in the replacement for him made a costly error, let two runs score, and they lose two to three. The season ending, he's like, I made a mistake. I should have started you. But what could he do that? So once again, I proved to myself I could do it. And then another obstacle came in the way. And this one I took personally. So in turn, I made myself a bigger promise. So I set out a promise that day 
that I was gonna go all state. And I told my dad I was gonna go all state. I said, why don't you just try to go all conference? I don't take a little pressure of you. He said, all right, well, the, the goal is all state, but I'm gonna try to make all conference. I said, okay. So I went in and I made sure I was the best player on that field. Jordan worked super hard. You know, we were hitting with Nelson and he knew that he was gonna be the starting first baseman. Went, went all in, lifting weights, running. paid off because just like that I was first team all state in Connecticut. Just like I said I would. And after going all state you couldn't tell me nothing man. It was awesome. One of the best accomplishments of my life. To this day I'm gonna remember that for the rest of my life. He didn't get caught up to JV as a freshman. He didn't get caught up to varsity as a sophomore or a junior until they were two and nine. Then they won eight straight. And then he comes up as a senior. And all the kids that was brought up before him they just didn't show up. You gotta keep, stay on the grind, keep your head up. And there's a word we always said. If you're the cream, you will rise to the top. The cream always rise to the top. Keep working hard. If you're the cream, you're gonna rise to the top. And that's our motto. All my kids, and that's what we live by. Now it was time for college. I had gotten recruited to play at Southern Vermont College. And I thought I had made it. And going to the pros would be super easy. College would be easy as well. But college made me learn that I wasn't even close. Back to the old stomping grounds. I almost felt like I was just coming back for school regularly here. Definitely didn't miss the cold. Yeah, Southern Vermont College. All right. so, <clears throat> you good? Yeah. Best I'm gonna get. Let's, <laughs> let's get it. My name is Nate. I was Jordan's roommate at SVC. A lot went down on this field. Not too many good things. Me and my roommate Nate came here with big expectations. The team had finished second in the conference and they were only graduating two seniors. So basically they were just gonna be keeping the same team and then when they added me and my housemate Nate and a couple other guys that we met along the way, it looked like we were gonna be a shoo-in for the tournament. So we got here and things were all right, you know? We met the team, we met some guys, they all seemed cool. So we were just ready to get to work. I would say they had a nice campus for what it was. It was a small school, which I did like. I mean, the cat food could have been a little bit better, but... <laughs> Luminate was real fun. Never a dull moment, to be honest. The, the team had other ideas. What about like when we first got there? What did we say that was like, oh no, this could be a setup? That was orientation. orientation. We went to the cat for the first time. Saw grilled chicken. All right, let's see what we got here. Took a bite, cold. Cold ice. Cold ice cold. But before we could even start playing on the field, someone got in trouble, too drunk. They had to end up getting their stomach pumped on a team. First night, somebody went to the hospital. Our team could not stay away from alcohol. They couldn't control themselves and they would do stupid things and we would take the punishment for them. Guys kept getting in trouble. It was always the same guys too, but the coach saw it as the whole team was getting in trouble, so the whole team had to do punishments. It might have looked like nothing in the beginning, but that event right there set a domino effect of more events that would ultimately lead not just me, but the entire team down a path that we shouldn't have been on in the first place. I'm not blaming the school for, for how the team turned out. We wanted to have fun. Every time we tried to have a little bit of fun, the school was right on our backs and we couldn't really do much. I would say a big con would be campus safety. They were a big issue. They took things a little bit too far. They gave people tickets for parking in spots. They gave they gave the pizza guy a ticket. I feel like that started to split us as a team right then and there. We had different cliques. We weren't really all together. Yeah, the first year was rough for me and, and Nate and a bunch of other guys. This is when I started going down the wrong path. Started making terrible decisions for myself, becoming an alcoholic, not working out, smoking weed, being lazy. It was just not for me. 
I suffered because of that. When you're in college, especially you're a freshman, especially me coming off of being all state, I thought I literally didn't have to work anymore. I thought I was already in the MLB. I told Jordan to uh, go to prep. I was getting ready to, to uh, pay for him to go to prep. And he's like, nah, you know, the head was, he's all state. Now I ain't going to prep, I'm going right to college. Then I wish he had went to prep. That would have been big, but he just wanted to be wanted. He just wanted to be wanted. That's all. Everybody has a different road to go to where they had to get to. If you gave me one chance to go back and restart at that moment and ask me if I would choose to go to prep. And then the spring rolls around and we play our first two games and we win both of our first two games. We started off the season. We look good, honestly. Won both games. And it was looking up for the team, you know? I thought, like, maybe we could turn it around. I remember, and I quote, one of our higher-up teammates said, nobody is going to be us. We're too good. I got a chance to get four at-bats in the uh, the second game. And uh, the second game, I had I had two hits. Two hits to start the, the season off. I was feeling nice. I was like, wow, Division Three, like, we played 38 games that season. And I got my first two hits in the first two. Now, what if I told you that those were my last two hits of the season? Because that happened. <laughs> as soon as we faced real competition, our kind of crumbled a little bit. Then we had a couple non-conference games, and we lost 11 straight. <laughs> not once. We had not one. But two times during the season. But two separate 11 game losing streaks. You, you can't even, there's no words for that. Went to California at least. That was pretty fun. Actually one of the better trips I had in my life. But the team didn't care. We were getting beat 26 to two. We went 0-8, we didn't win a single game. The scores were never close. We were always getting blown out by 15 runs, I would say the least. We just didn't care. So after finishing, what, dead last in the conference, the coach who recruited me and the head coach of the team left. At the moment, it was like kind of scary. It was like, you're just leaving? Like you recruited me to come here and you're leaving? And I was actually really sad that that happened because now I felt like I made the wrong decision by coming here. So now Jordan, he comes home after his first year up at SVC, he was doing, he wasn't doing too good and everything, he was doing bad. He goes, Dad, I don't think I enjoy baseball anymore. I said, why? He said, I don't know, I'm just not feeling that. I said, I tell you what, we got hit with Nelson tonight. We're gonna go up there and we're gonna see what happens, see what he could do for you, and then we'll make a decision after that, okay? It didn't go too well. We got into a big argument and everything like that, and Jordan went out. He left, he went outside into the car. I went out there after him. We again faced the reality that uh, Jordan was struggling with his back, but we put it the time and the effort again instead of trying to talk. So before I could worry about my baseball well-being, I had to worry about my own and decided to work on myself first. Kind of had an epiphany. I came back home and, and told my dad everything that was going on and how I was being lazy, smoking, drinking, and doing all this stuff that I shouldn't do. And I decided I was gonna change because I wanted to transfer out and I actually needed to do good in the season to prove my worth to some school that potentially wanted me. I was like, okay, well, a bad choice isn't a bad choice if you Rectify it. So we all gonna make mistakes. Um, so you ready to rec rectify your mistake? He says, yeah. You learned your lesson? He says, yeah. I said I was gonna stay for one more year and then I was gonna be out no matter what. But eventually, after I kept working and kept getting after it and felt better about myself and started creating good habits for myself, I eventually got my swing back and I was ready to go into the next season. And the next season went, went really well. I would say our second season probably went better than our first season. So then he comes back, he goes back to SVC, he has a pretty good year again. I mean, he does pretty good. I felt like I got better. Actually, I, I don't even regret coming here. I'm glad I came here. It's the decisions I made here that I regret. I could have been so much better. I decided to transfer to Sacred Heart. It was one of the better decisions I made in my life. Don't regret it for a bit. I did decide to transfer. Ended up going to Southern Connecticut University with intentions on playing baseball. It didn't work out that way in the end. I think it was a good decision to get out of there when we did. Some people might think I got all this hate and anger boiled up towards Southern Vermont College or SVC for short. Nah, 
SVC definitely taught me how to like start off being independent. Like you're kind of just on your own. I don't even know if there was any cons that like SVC caused me now. The year after Nate and I left Southern Vermont College, the school shut down and closed. Closed about three years too late, if you ask me. But all I gotta say is, is thank you. I learned how to grow up here. So it was on the Sacred Heart, and I was still determined to play, so that's what I set out to do. Maybe you can uh, do a walk on on the uh, baseball team, too. He says, Yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. He goes down to Virginia again and does really well. Dry, soft, and comfortable ride. Designed for ultimate fishability, incredible comfort. Oh, he's just tearing the cup. He made the all star team and everything like that. So I finally get my tryout after sitting out for one year and playing club, and I get one at bat in a scrimmage. And I hit a double. So just when I was expecting a big email to come back. He never heard nothing from the coach. The coach never gave me, the coach never go. And the three guys that got up after him, two struck out and one hit a little ground ball to the pitcher. And he never gave Jordan a call. He just can't get on the team. He's falling through the cracks. So I have no idea what he wanted, but. Apparently it just wasn't me. I, I didn't know what to do. I did so much to get there. This is what I do usually four days a week. I get up early, I go to the gym. A lot of people call it crazy that I'm getting up at 4.30. To get where I wanna get, you gotta be a little crazy. Especially if we want it bad. And I definitely do. I think it's easy getting up and going to the gym at 4.30. The hard part about it is finding that motivation. Especially when there's nothing to motivate you. No spot on the team. No nothing. So now that brought me to October 29th, 2020. <sighs> well, October 29th. 2020, it's time to ask the coach for a tryout. So honestly, like, I just want to go find out. Some things said I didn't agree with. It seemed like he uh, reluctantly gave me a shot, but uh, a shot's a shot, so appreciate it. And uh, I'm ready to make the most of my opportunity again. Guess we'll see. Well, fitting it's raining out today. Just been informed that uh, there'll be no more fall practices. So not only will that result in me not getting a tryout, it's a strong chance that I will not be playing in the spring for division one here. I truly do not know what to do. I have no plan, I have nothing. Am I still mad? Yeah. So yes, I am currently not playing Division One, and all my dreams of playing Division One are done, basically. But I still have things in my life motivating me. All right, so my name is Jacoby Banks. I'm 18 years old. I go to Brazil Central High School. Yo, slow down, slow down. Slow I can't go fast. No, all bro. Right. So one day uh, I was happy. No, was cut that. Out. Ah! <laughs> my name is Jacoby Banks. I'm 18 years old. I go to Bristol Central High School where Jordan went. I'm a senior and I'm about to graduate this year and um, I play baseball just like him. My brother Jacoby is a huge reason why I'm still playing. He makes me lead by example. He makes me not quit even when all hope is lost or seems like it. Because to him, uh, I'm his favorite player. I really look up to him. He keeps me going, pushes me to be better and which I love him for it. And, um, I'm hoping that he gets drafted, maybe by any any by any MLB team. It doesn't matter as long as he's in the MLB. 
I hope I have him one, there one day too, just like him. And and uh, hopefully we both make it. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Come on, this is good. Come on, the band. That's a wrap. So after that day, I was informed of COVID canceling fall practices. I no longer had a tryout and I no longer had anything to play for. Until my dad met one of his friends at the gym and gave me another chance. So he sent me this uh, pamphlet about uh, independent league and everything like that. And it's just amazing that that came out. So I sent it to Jordan and uh, Jordan said, oh, I like it. So Jordan, you know, did what he had to do. And now um, he's going to be going down there. So as of summer 2021, I'm playing independent baseball. I have a showcase in June, and hopefully this is the start of a new baseball journey. My expectation with Jordan is going to be that he's going to be successful. Since he's a great kid, he got a tremendous work ethic. I know that he's going to put on the effort to get successful at whatever he put his mind into. Jordan's been getting up five in the morning, working out all all the time. He wants it so so bad, man. This kid wants it. He's got a fire from every time coming up from being this, you know, being put back, being trying to stop him from getting to where he's trying to get, and he keeps leaping these these hiccups and bumps in the road and stuff like that. It's just all it's doing is just fueling him even more and more and more. And uh, I think this is a good uh, fit for him down there to showcase his talents. And I always told my son, you know our model, the cream always rise to the top. So it looks like the world is throwing another obstacle at me, looking to stop me. But if you didn't know, I've done seen it before. And if you still don't know, I guess you better ask somebody.